What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now in this video we are going to make a puzzle box. It's a nice simple little build and it's a great gift idea and you can make it as elaborate or as simple as you like. You can make it from plywood but we're going to make a nice decorative little box to keep our puzzle in and uh, make the puzzle itself. I've been watching a YouTuber by the name of Chris Ramsey and um, solved loads of puzzles. I've watched hours of his footage and uh, I really love puzzles. That's why I'm watching it. Um, they're fantastic. They're great fun. And there are some brilliant puzzle builders out there and some really elaborate, beautiful woodworking uh, puzzles. So something I want to get into more and more, make some more and more elaborate puzzles. So we'll start with a simple one. We'll make a really nice box to put it in. I'm going to use up some of these offcuts that I have under the table. I have bins full of offcuts down here, so we're going to use up some of them. So yeah, without further ado, let's get a closer look and take you through what we're going to do. Okay, let's take a quick look at what this puzzle is. Now, hopefully you've seen on the opening clip of this video uh, exactly what this puzzle is. You could buy these puzzles anywhere. You've probably come across these before. It's basically that cube full of loads of different shaped blocks and you have to get all the blocks back in once you tip them out and there's a certain order they have to go in. It's very simple. It's very uh, based on a very simple principle. I will share the solution coming towards the end of this video I'll give you a spoiler warning to make sure that you don't spoil it for yourselves if you don't want to know the solution but you can still build a puzzle without knowing the solution which is the great thing so it's very very simple so it's a basically a cube and we're going to divide it up into five by five by five so five units of measurement so whatever measurement whatever size you want to build your box it's going to be five equal measurements I just so happen to have an off cut piece here that's exactly 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters so that's going to be my measurement so it's going to be cubes made of 15 mil by 15 mil by 15 mil and that's going to be my unit we're going to call that one unit of measurement so you're going to need five of those cubes so whatever measurement you go with five of those units so make five of those then you're going to make six units which will be two units wide by four units long so six of those two wide by four long and then you're going to need to make another six blocks which are four units by three units again i'll make all these now in a second i'll lay them all out on the table and you'll see exactly um, what we're making so if it doesn't make sense now it will in a few minutes so that is going to be the puzzle itself five of these six of these and then six more of these blocks and they all go in in a certain pattern that once you tip them out of the box it's very difficult to get them back in and that's the puzzle itself so that's nice and simple we'll go through that now in a second now i want to make a display box so i'm going to make a box similar to the one this one I've made, the one with the dovetail keys in it. So I'm gonna make a nice ash box. Again, it'll be a bandsaw box type thing. We'll cut off the lid. We will put in two rebated um, panels, two nice decorative panels. We will have an internal section to the box. So this is made from maple with this piece of with, with, uh, walnut. So the maple section is gonna be our internal diameter for our puzzle. And then it'll have a nice lid to sit on just like that. So again, it's going to be all very, very simple. Um, it's just going to be a mitre box with internal mitres and uh, some dovetail keys. We will make an ash box with walnut dovetail keys to house this little puzzle. So let's crack on. Okay, the first thing we want to do in is then is make up our little blocks for the inside of our puzzle. And like I say, it's whatever unit of measurement you're going to pick, I'm working with 15 millimeters. So it's going to be 15 by 15 by 15 are going to be my little cubes. We're going to call them our units. And I need five of them. So I'm going to make five of them out of that. Then I need to make six, which are two units by four units. So two units wide by four units long. So they are all right, almost ready to go. We just have to cut them up. Again, making sure that everything is nice and flush and uh, exactly the same size. Then I've just glued up some pieces now, so I have to go mill these up. These are the ones that are gonna be four units by three units. So essentially it's gonna be like two of those stuck together, like that, and then it'll be three units long. So it'll all make sense when I have all these things made anyway. So nice and simple. So I'm gonna take these to the planar thickness right now, and we'll get these milled up to the correct dimensions. Then we'll take everything to the miter saw and we'll cut up our little blocks.
guys, they are all our puzzle pieces, all done up, ready to go. So like I said, you need five of your units, whatever your unit of measurement is going to be, minus 15 mil, so it's 15 by 15 by 15, so five of those little cubes. Then you're going to need six of these guys, which are two cubes wide, or two units of your measurement wide by four long. So there you go, two by four exactly. And you're going to need six of those. And then you will need six of these guys, which are four cubes. So they'll be 30 by 30 in the front. Hopefully you can see that by three cubes long. So that should make it nice and simple. So five of your units of measurement, 15 by 15 by 15. Then we have six pieces, which are 15 by 30 by 60. Then we have six pieces, which are 30 by 30 by 45. And they are all our pieces that are gonna make up our cube and they go in in a certain fixed pattern. There's only one way that these, all these pieces can go together to go into our box uh, to make up our puzzle. So now that we have that, we can set that aside for a while. We will be oh, dropping it all over the floor and sanding it. And now we're gonna make the internal part of our box. Okay, this is the next thing we're gonna make. We're gonna make the internal part of our box. So I'm gonna make a copy of this box. You could just make a simple mitre box. You don't have to go to all this length that I'm gonna to go to, but I wanna make it so it's a nice little presentation box. And it just makes the puzzle that little bit special in someone's hand. So like I say, you don't have to go to all this trouble, but I'm going to. So I wanna make the internal part of the box. And this is essentially gonna be the size of the, my cube that the pieces are gonna go into. So. You can see I have five blocks along the bottom, so five lots of 15, that's 75 mil, so it's gonna be five by five by five, so 75 millimeters by 75 millimeters by 75 millimeters. I'm gonna make that out of um, walnut. My outside of my box is gonna be made from ash, so walnut on the inside. And uh, yeah, so nice and simple. I'm gonna mill up a bit of um, walnut now to sit inside my box. I'm gonna make this section so it's gonna be 75 millimeters by 75 millimeters by 75 millimeters. Nice and simple and then it's gonna be five mil thick. And so then you can build your box out the way from there. So now we know from that then we can get the external dimensions of what our ash part is going to need to be. So hopefully that's all making sense. It will when it all goes together. So let's rock on and mill up our walnut. Okay guys, there is this, that's essentially our size of our box now that all these pieces have to fit back inside and they do all go back inside but like i say only one way now you could just make a motor box this side so you just put a top and bottom on it and that would do perfect like i say i'm going to make a box like this one so that's now the internal part of my box so we need to make the external part now so that's going to be nice and simple we have these dimensions now so now we can just measure this and make our box so we know that this is going to sit on our panel that goes in the bottom. So now we know the depth for our rebate. We can measure the sides of our box off this. So whatever the size you decide to make this, however big or however small, if you're gonna make it the way I'm making it now, your internal box, you can measure this now to get all the external dimensions of your external box. So nice and simple. Now, I'm gonna take some um, ash and mill that up to the correct dimensions. And I won't bore you with that going through all the paint or thickness or again. So I'll get all that milled up. We we'll cut the 45s on it. We we'll run it through the router table to put our rebates in. And then we're almost ready to glue this thing together. So let me get on that. And as soon as I have that all wrapped up, I'll get back to you. Okay, guys, we have our ash sides milled up. Now this is going to make the external part of our mitre box. So we're going to get our measurements for the inside now. So I want to mark where this rebate goes and where the rebate goes in the lid and where our lid goes. So it's pretty simple. I want 10 mil, the same as I have here, into the bottom of my box. So I'm gonna measure up, it's gonna be a six mil rebate. So I'm gonna measure up 13 um, mil. That'll bring me back down 10 mil to the bottom of my box. And that'll tell me exactly where this guy is gonna sit then. So let's measure that. So if I go up 10, which is there, then I go up six, which puts me right there. That is my rebate center of which will be exactly 13 mil. That gives me where my internal box will sit, right on that line. Now I want to be same for the lid. I want to come down 13 millimeters to the center of my rebate. So 10 and another six on top of that. Then that'll be my rebate there. And then I want to be 10 millimeters 
down from this mark here. So that's where I'm going to cut my lid at. Okay, so I'll square all these lines up now. Okay, so there we are all marked up. Now hopefully this is coming out on camera. So there's my bottom rebate or dados. That's where my panel is going to sit. My internal box will sit on the bottom or on that top of that panel then. So then I've just measured the same distance in for, into my lid. I'll be bandsawing this box up. So we'll assemble the box and bandsaw it. So there's my rebate from my top where my top panel is going to sit. Then I've just measured down 10 mil past this guy because this is going to sit up into the lid to hold the lid on. Now I have a gap between here and here for my rebate. That's about five mil. Um, I'm going to be cutting this line and I'll have to plane off the box both sides. So that's going to close that down a small bit. So we, lose, we might lose a mil and a half with the core for the bandsaw blade, maybe two mil. And then when I'm planing everything flush so the box goes together, we'll lose another couple of mil. So that should bring my rebate down onto the top of this guy, which will hold my puzzle in place. So that's why I'm leaving that gap there. So we can afford, afford to kind of burn that five mil if we need to. So that's the way that's going to work. So the next thing we're going to do now is take two of these to the router table and route out for our two rebates. Then we can cut all this on our bandsaw. Then we can, uh, we need to make our two panels and then it's a case of glue this together. When the glue sets, then we can run it through the bandsaw. You know yourself. Let's rock on. Okay guys, there we go. We have a box within a box. Hopefully you can see in there now. So we're all mitered up, our two mitre boxes, one internal, one external. And we have our dados or our rebates cut for our panels. Now to make up the panels, decide what I'm gonna make them out of. I might use some of that spot to beach. And once the panels are made, then we can glue the external box together. When that's done, then we can put in our, our mitre splines and then we can put in the internal box after we cut the lid off. And we're almost there. So a little bit more work to do. I need to go mill up now some panels for the top and bottom of this. Okay guys, we are ready for glue up. So I'll just give everything an initial sand. I just made my panels out of um, walnut. I might as well keep to the walnut and ash team. I couldn't find a nice piece of spalted beach. So we just used little ash off cuts that I had to make the panels. So now it's just a case of glue everything together. So this box will go together. Just like the last box that I made, very, very simple. Panels just sit in and all the sides go on, just like that. And the panels will help keep everything square for the glue up. Famous last words. There we go, just like that. So, it's time to get this glued up now. And once the glue is set, we can cut our mitre splines. Hey guys, there we go. We are all glued up. All our mitres closed up nicely, so it's looking good. So just leave that now for a few hours and we can get back to it and cut the lid off this box. Guys, our box is all uh, glued up now. So the glue has gone off. It's set enough so that we can work on it. I just went out for a nice little stroll there and came back and uh, everything is nice and glued up. I also, before we went, I sanded all these pieces down. So rounded over every single corner. So they're nice to touch in hand. They have nice little round corners and they're not too harsh. So they are all ready to go. Um, our insert pieces are ready to go. Our, our internal cube is ready to go. So now let's take this to the router table. I'm going to use the, the spline jig to put the miters on it. I actually decided I'm going to put straight miters in this. So I've done the dovetails before. So if you want to check out how to do dovetail miter splines, go back and watch that and um, build for that box. I will link that up here so you guys can check that out. But we're going to do some straight miter splines on this one, I think. And the fact that I already have some six mil um, 
walnut made up that I made these panels out of, they'll work perfect for the spline. So I'm going to use the same 6mm router bit, a nice straight router bit, just to cut some straight splines in this. So let's get on it. Okay, I've just measured in 15mm from the top and 15mm from the bottom. The fact that my lid is going to be 30mm um, thick, I want to be in the centre of my lid more or less. So 15mm, 15mm and then the centre point of those two things. Now we can just square these all around. They're only guidelines anyway, they're not. We don't have to hold ourselves to these. We'll be setting the router table anyway, so. Should be good. Okay, we're ready to go. And the jig is super simple, so I'm not gonna go through this again too much because I've already covered this um, in the last box build. So it, again, it just keeps your box at 45 degrees to your top both ways. So you can cut straight through your 90 degree corner with your router bit. This goes against your fence, set your distance and just keep flipping your box around, cut all your force miters, then you can flip your box this way, cut all these ones, and then you just have to do one change to cut the middle miter. So it's nice and simple. So I'm gonna crack on now and do this and uh, it only takes a few minutes. There we go, all our splines are cut. It is as simple as that. So just a quick trip to the miter saw then and we just cut up our spline pieces themselves and uh, we do only glue them in place. Very, very simple, there's nothing to this. Let's get some glue in there. Make sure they're seated home. Okay, there we go, as simple as that. Just get them all glued in there, make sure they're all seated at home, make sure you've not check each side of them that they're bedded properly and you don't have a gap, so when you flush them off, you're not looking at any gaps. And it is literally as simple as that. Now, we'll let that glue set up, let them go off, and then we will flush them off, sand it up, and then we can cut our lid off. Okay, it's time to cut the lid off this. Now, I was going to take it to the bandsaw, but it's a small box, and because my miter saw has such a massive depth, depth of cut, I can get through this whole box with nearly one cut. This thing is extremely accurate, and uh, you get jointable edges out of it. So, I'm thinking I'm going to chop it with the chop saw. I've never done this before, so I don't see why it's going to be a problem. I, everything is good and solid. I have a nice straight edge there to bring me out, so I have a full range of my cut. And yeah, it's just a case of chop straight through this thing, like any other piece of timber. And like I say, this thing is so accurate and gives such a clean cut that um, my bandsaw doesn't cut straight, really. So this is the safest option. And the fact that I don't have a table saw, I think I'm going to do it this way. So yeah, let's do it. It's an experiment. Okay, so we took a shot, we took a risk. It didn't quite work out. It's uh, not perfect the whole way around. We have a slight gap here because I had to do it in two cuts. We have a little bit more here. So that's what shooting boards are for. So we'll finish this up on the shooting board now and we'll get it fitting nice and flush.
Okay, we recovered from that almost catastrophe. That was a bit of a dumb move cutting that on the motor, so I have to say. I won't be doing that again, but uh, there we go. It was worth the experiment, I suppose. So we straightened everything up on the shooting board, so the edges aren't too bad. I'm not going to go any more because I don't want to remove any more material because my box will get a bit small. So that's a pretty clean edge I have there. Little bits in the corner that I'm not happy with, but you know, it's not detrimental to the design. So we will crack on. So. Let's get our internal pans in then. These won't take much glue on to put these in. Just a small bit on the back to hold them in place. And we should be good. Here we go. I don't know why it was so tight. It wasn't that tight when I first fitted. But there we are. It's a good snug fit. Happy days. Okay guys, it is the next day and let that be a lesson to me. Don't work late at night when you're woodworking. When you get tired, you do stupid stuff like uh, try and cut boxes on a miter saw. So that didn't work out too good. So we've squared everything up now and our lid is fitting nicely. Um, but we're left with a gap all the way around. Now my lid is hitting my internal box. So we have a two mil gap all the way around. And if we're gonna have something that we're gonna look at, we're gonna make it a feature. So that's what I intend to do. So I have some cherry veneer here. So I'm gonna fit that in that gap all the way around. And then we have a nice cherry line in here. Just, um, I suppose it'll be a de decorative edge. So we'll make it a feature uh, instead of a flaw. Now, all the cubes are together and they form a perfect cube. All the little blocks, they're somewhere in this image. I'm not gonna tell you where they are, but uh, I'll reveal the solution at the end of the video and I'll tell you when to look away if you don't wanna see it. The beauty of this puzzle is you can build it without knowing the solution, so that's great. So let's crack on with this cherry veneer now. Okay, here's our piece of cherry. It has a nice little grain pattern in it. So we're gonna use this and I'm just gonna, literally gonna cut um, um, this mitre it and glue it all the way around. Then I'll use my lid to compress it and hold it on. So I shouldn't have any gap in there then and uh, it'll be just, just the right thickness, which will be perfect. And we'll have a nice cherry line that will uh, contrast between the ash lid and the ash box. So um, yeah, it's less of a flaw now and more of a feature. So not to this, I'm gonna take it to the miter saw and cut my miters. Okay, so I have my pieces to where I'm happy with them. Now, it's a little bit of a tricky glue up, not too difficult, but anytime you're doing like a little tricky glue up, it's always best to do a dry run first, just to plan how you're gonna go together. And uh, I have a plan now, so it's nice and simple. So we just whip everything off and have it ready to go. Okay, beautiful, there we go. We will set that to one side, let that go off for a while, let the glue set up, and uh, we come back to it, then we can flush that off and uh, sand all around and get our flush with our lid. Now, while that's happening, I'm gonna put an oil finish on the blocks um, just to keep working. So let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna finish this entire project with Danish oil, nice and simple. So I have to do each and every one of these blocks with just one coat. All our blocks are oiled. Now, while I let that dry and while I'm letting my glue dry, I'll take this opportunity to go clean the workshop and then I will be back with you guys. Okay guys, we are all glued up now, so I'm just gonna band saw off most of this. I could um, flush, get a flush cut router bit and run it on a router table, but it's uh, fairly thin and I could risk busting off the corners doing that. So I'm just gonna cut off the excess on the band saw and then we'll sand it to its final dimensions. So let's do it. Okay, there we go. We have a nice little orange cherry line in there now, which should look nice when we hit it with the Danish oil. It gives a nice little contrast, nice little border, or a nice little break between our lid and our box. So I think we recovered well from that. So now I'm gonna continue on sanding this box. I'm gonna to get to it up to about 300 grit. I think that should be perfect. And when I have that done, we'll come back and I'll put the oil finish on. So let me get on with that and I'll get back to you. Okay, we are all sanded up. Now time for my favorite part as always, and that's applying the finish because you get to see your piece come alive. So let's get some oil on this thing. Thank you. 
Okay guys, a quick tip for you there. Make sure that you keep your internal box about two millimeters oversized. So I made mine exact, I put in all my pieces, they fit absolutely perfectly, but they were nearly impossible to get back out again. So that's no good for anybody trying to use this puzzle. It needs to be slightly loose. So you can take your units, your two by four um, pieces, so two measurements by four measurements, whatever you decide to go for, and you can just use them then to check to make sure that you're nice and loose the whole way across. So they should be, it should be loose feeling like that. It shouldn't be snug. If it's gonna be snug, then you'll never get these pieces back out again. So I had to pare down the inside of my wall with my chisel, just to give myself that extra couple of mil all around. Now, if you're gonna do that, make sure you have a super flat back chisel, otherwise you're gonna run into problems. So um, I'm just about ready to go now. So I'm gonna re-sand the inside of this, refinish it, and then we're just there. Right guys, there we go. One puzzle box complete. I have to say, I really enjoyed that build. I really enjoyed making this. This is a gift for somebody. So when you have somebody in mind, it always makes it a little bit nicer, inspires you a little bit more. And I think it makes you put a little bit more thought into the project too. So it's made from ash. We have our nice walnut motor splines. We have that cherry um, line between the lid and the body of the box, which turned out quite nice, I think. Um, so we made a mistake, but we recovered. And actually, I think that's a, a nice little touch. So it might be something that I will do in future is to put a little line like that of different material. A nice acrylic in there now, a red or a green or a blue acrylic would be lovely in there. So it's a good idea. So I kind of design on the fly, design as I'm going. I always have an idea, I never have a plan. So um, yeah, I think just by accident, we have discovered a nice little detail there for the box. So I'm quite happy with that. Again, leave your, box, your internal box, about two millimeters oversized, just so those pieces, they should be able to rattle a small bit in there, otherwise you'll never get them out. I put them in and I could not get them out, so I had to battle to get them back out and then pare down the walls. So that's one bit of advice I give you. Don't cut your box on a miter saw like I did, that was a stupid thing to do. But uh, again, it ended up with a great result, so, you know, it's all experimentation at the end of the day. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. Thumbs up if you did. If you're not subscribed here already, be sure and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell if you wanna get notifications. Don't if you don't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that one. I'm gonna make some more puzzle boxes in upcoming videos, and um, some more intricate ones, some maybe original designs. I really like puzzles and puzzle boxes and I love the woodworking aspect of it. So I might try and marry the woodworking with some electrical stuff for some more puzzle boxes, I have some ideas. So that'll be some upcoming videos. So yeah, there you go. Now, the solution is going to be in after my logo and comes up at the end of this video. So keep watching if you want a solution. If you don't want a solution, turn off as soon as I walk off the screen. And uh, that's it guys. So I get out of here now and I shall see you in the next one. Take it easy.